Hello all of you out there in internet land, it's your boy Jacob. And your new best friend Dave. By the time this video airs, the best day of the year, All Hallows Eve, will be done and dusted. But here in the past, we're still just a day away from the most frightacular day of the year. So we've decided to carry out our own twisted experiments. Yes, we've decided to take this innocent RTX 2070 and chop and change its very being until it performs just like a GTX 1080 Ti. So strap on your surgical apron, power up the giant diodes, and let's begin the transmutation process. The RTX 2070 launched but a few weeks ago, starting life at £469 for a stock clocked graphics card. However, that price tag swiftly heads out of the window once you get to third party overclocked graphics cards like this, the MSI Gaming Z. What we want to know is whether, for all its extra cooling, kitted out PCB and top tier silicon, we can push this very RTX 2070 Gaming Z to outperform a more expensive GTX 1080 Ti. With 3,584 CUDA cores, 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X and a 352-bit memory bus, the GTX 1080 Ti isn't going to be an easy card to beat. The RTX 2070 features just 2,304 CUDA cores, roughly a 35% deficit on this. It also comes with 8 gigabytes of faster GDDR6 memory and a 256-bit memory bus. But the RTX 2070 has another trick up its sleeve. With ray tracing on the agenda sometime in the near future, if you want to enjoy the holy grail of gaming, you don't have any other option but to pick up one of the RTX cards. And the RTX 2070 just happens to be the cheapest point of entry for that. But the GTX 1080 Ti is currently cheaper than ever, and the choice between the two graphics cards can be tricky. Do you go with future ray trace performance? Or incredible gaming performance right now? Well, with a little overclocking and one of the beefier third-party cards on the market, there's a chance you might be able to have your cake and eat it. Don't eat it. Because this is already a factory overclocked card, some of the groundwork has been done for us. But there is still a little ways to go before this card can truly match the GTX 1080 Ti. That means pushing our TU106 silicon to its very limits. Specifically, our card could manage 2040 MHz on the GPU before it gave up the ghost and it all faded to black. We employed Nvidia's own NV scanner functionality to get the voltage and frequency curve that could keep the card cool and content under pressure. That also reduced some of the unwanted behaviour the card was exhibiting with just a manual offset alone. The RTX 2070's 8GB of GDDR6 memory was also in need of a little TLC to get it up to speed with the GTX 1080 Ti's 11GB of GDDR5X. While GDDR6 is faster and less power hungry, memory bandwidth is still on the side of the GTX 1080 Ti. With bandwidth of 484GB per second versus 448GB per second and capacity of 11GB versus 8GB, there's a considerable memory performance deficit to jump between the flagship Pascal card and the entry-level ray tracing card. Luckily, it was pretty painless to tack on an extra 500MHz to the memory with the RTX 2070, all in all equating to a bump from 14 gigabits per second to 15 gigabits per second on the memory front and making up at least some of its shortcomings. We'd be lying if we said we weren't making our lives just a little bit easier starting out with this factory overclocked GPU. Rather than the boost clock of 1620 MHz with the reference sibling, the MSI Gaming Z starts out life with a 1710 MHz boost clock. That's already a 90 MHz factory OC bump. We're also only putting this card up against NVIDIA's reference Founders Edition 1080 Ti. We thought it to be cruel to pit this card against the ludicrous Gaming X trio. We had to give the RTX 2070 a chance after all. While the reference RTX 2070 still manages to top the GTX 1080, it falls quite a bit short of the GTX 1080 Ti in most games. This card, on the other hand, already gets within a few frames of the GTX 1080 Ti, sometimes even on par with the Pascal flagship. For the record, all of our forthcoming benchmarks are carried out at 4K, ultra or very high presets. During a run of the GPU-intensive DX11 benchmark heaven, the RTX 2070 Gaming Z right out of the box managed to get just a few frames shy of the GTX 1080 Ti at 41 frames per second versus 43 frames per second on average. But with our overclock in hand, the RTX 2070 managed to match the GTX 1080 Ti frame for frame. This overclocked RTX 2070 Gaming Z hit an average of 43 FPS and a minimum of 22 FPS. Meanwhile, in a run of Deus Ex Mankind Divided, one of the most demanding titles we torture these poor GPUs with, 
The RTX 2070 was only one frame behind, at 15 frames per second, to Pascal's shining star at 16 frames per second. And yet again, the overclocked RTX 2070 manages to match the GTX 1080 Ti, managing 16 frames FPS on average and 13 frames minimum. In Assassin's Creed Origins, the RTX 2070 didn't need much help to encroach on the GTX 1080 Ti's territory. Even at stock, the 20 series card manages to equal the average FPS of the GP102 Giant at 48 frames per second on average. But that extra push gave the RTX 2070 what it needed to surpass its age competition, managing 50 FPS average and 42 FPS minimum. In Far Cry 5, the RTX 2070 Gaming Z manages in 49 FPS to the GTX 1080 Ti's 56. That proved a tough nut to crack for our RTX 2070 in this AMD enhanced title. Even while overclocked, the comparatively stunted silicon of the RTX 2070 couldn't match the sheer CUDA core dominance of the GTX 1080 Ti. We managed to push the card up to 51 FPS average and 46 FPS minimum, but that only still fell short of the GTX 1080 Ti's lofty performance. And finally, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in which the GTX 1080 Ti pulls ahead significantly. While the RTX 2070 Gaming Z manages 36 frames per second in the DX12 title, the GTX 1080 Ti manages a lofty 41 frames per second. Yet again, that proves insurmountable for even the overclocked RTX 2070, only managing 38 FPS and 33 FPS minimum. The RTX 2070 still has a lot more to offer with this particular title, however. Shadow of the Tomb Raider will eventually be one of the first games to support real-time ray tracing with its shadows. Well, once Microsoft gets DirectX Ray Tracing, currently in Windows Update Limbo, out of user experience, hell it will anyway. So our twisted experiment was a success, at least from a certain point of view. On the one hand, the RTX 2070 proved not only capable of GTX 1080 Ti performance, but actually surpassed its Pascal predecessor in some titles. But in other games, the sheer power of the GTX 1080 Ti and its considerable CUDA superiority couldn't be matched. Its advantage resulted in anything from a single frame to 3 or 4 FPS in titles that favour the brute force approach of the GP102 GPU. The RTX 2070, while still really expensive compared to its Pascal namesake, the GTX 1070, is the cheaper card with more promise for the future. While still a leap of faith for future performance right now, ray tracing and DLSS might just be enough to sway gamers over to the Turing architecture. So if you've liked what you've seen or just feel vindicated in your RTX 2070 purchase, just make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. Also check out PCGamesN.com for the very latest in hardwareism and gaming. Thanks for watching. Bye!